Our last video showed hydrogen and helium with electrons in the S subshell. Then, is n equals 2 lithium and beryllium, this S subshell was just a bit larger spherical cloud. Sodium and magnesium, n equals 3, continued this spherical cloud pattern as subshell 3s. And for all of these subshells, the quantum angular momentum number L was equal to 0. Now, welcome to our fifth chemistry video describing how electrons fill orbitals and the shapes of those orbitals. In this video, we'll stay in the third principal energy level, n equals 3, and discuss how the orbitals are filled for the elements in groups 13 through 18. For hydrogen and helium, n equals 1, and the angular momentum, L equals 0, there is just the 1s orbital. n equals 2, there are 8 elements, and these electrons are in both 2s and 2p subshells. For principal energy level, n equals 3, the third row, sodium and magnesium, the left two groups, fill the s orbital, and L equals zero. And this video will now continue along the third row and show how the electrons from the groups on the right side, in this case aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon, will fill the p orbitals. Starting our review with a look at the first three elements, we have aluminum. From period three, we know principal energy level n equals three. And from group 13, we know the angular momentum L is equal to one. As mentioned earlier, the first two electrons from this period, sodium and magnesium, already occupy the spherical 3s subshell. And from the Pauli exclusion principle, we know we cannot add another electron to that orbital. Plus, with a different angular momentum, we expect a different shape. With an angular momentum of 1, we see that aluminum, the yellow wave, will be the first element in this energy level to have an electron move into one of the 3p orbitals. The shape of this orbital is like a dumbbell, where there is more density at these polar regions. So to help remember this, we can use the P, which stands for principal, but we'll use it for polar. The electrons in the P orbitals are out in these two lobes most of the time, and they're very rarely near the center of the nucleus. And also, like the S orbital, there is no defined orbital path, but the electron is more of a wave or a cloud around the nucleus. And this polar shape represents the region where the electron will be found most of the time. Let's review the second element in the p orbital groups on the right side of the periodic table, silicon. One more positively charged proton and one more negatively charged electron, also with angular momentum L equals 1. It would be very easy to assume this electron, the purple wave, would simply go into the same p subshell with the aluminum electron. But remember, around 1927, the German physicist Friedrich Hund stated that the lowest energy state is one where the total spin is maximized. And, to maximize the spin, all of the orbitals in a subshell are each occupied with one electron of the same spin before an electron of opposite spin goes into the same orbital. So, in this case, the silicon electron will go into a similarly shaped p orbital but it will just be at right angles to the first p orbital. Using our x, y, and z axis for our three dimensions, we can simply use a naming convention where the first p orbital is px, and the second p orbital we call py. Again, these orbitals are both the same polar shape. They're just at right angles to each other. Let's put back the second element and now review the third, phosphorus from group 15. Phosphorus will add another electron to remain electrically neutral, and where n equals 3 and l equals 1, we know that we'll again have a 3p or polar shaped orbital. But like before, this electron, the blue wave, would not be maximizing spin if we were to put it in 3py, or if we put it in 3px. So again, following Hun's rule, this electron will go into a third dumbbell shaped p orbital, and this one will be perpendicular to both px and py orbitals. This we'll call the 3pz orbital. So, for all three electrons, principal energy level n equals 3 means they're all in the third electron shell, and with angular momentum l equals 1 means they're all three similar p-shaped orbitals. All will have this similar dumbbell polar shape, but each will just be at right angles to the other two p orbitals in the subshell. We'll have 3px going right to left. Then there'll be 3py going front to back aligned with the y-axis. And finally, 3pz going up and down, which aligns with the z-axis. To maximize spin, all of the electrons in these 3p orbitals will have the same spin 
And so in the words of Hund's rule, there is a maximum multiplicity or maximum number of unpaired electrons, which for phosphorus should be the lowest energy or ground state. We put phosphorus back into the table and understand from here the next three elements are really just simply adding in order another electron to each of the three p orbitals. The sulfur electron, the green wave, we'll say it goes into 3py and fills that second electron with opposite spin. Chlorine can go into either of the two remaining orbitals with one electron, and so we'll say it goes into 3px, the red wave, again with opposite spin. Finally, argon. This electron, the cyan wave, goes into the last unfilled orbital, 3pz, with opposite spin. With that, we now have all of the six third energy level p subshell electrons in paired orbits, and since each has two electrons, one spin up and one spin down, we know that there can be no more electrons in these orbitals. Since the 3s shell was filled with two electrons, sodium and magnesium, we have now filled the third principal energy level with eight electrons. Notice the last element is argon, a noble gas. As expected, noble gases have full shells. Remember, each row is a principal energy level, and these six columns or groups on the right represent elements where electrons go into p orbitals. Hopefully, from this video, you've seen and it's been reinforced that the elements filling p shells are those in the six columns or groups on the right side of the periodic table, groups 13 through 18. And each energy level's p shell is just a similarly shaped larger shell as we build up the electron cloud. Our next video, we move into the fourth principal energy level, n equals 4, and we'll just briefly cover the 4s and 4p shells, and then try to show how the third subshell, the d subshell, is filled. We hope to see you in that video, and if you like these videos, please give them a thumbs up or a comment down below, and help the channel grow by telling a friend or becoming a subscriber.